Elena Bashkirova, shalom. <laughs> shalom. And welcome to Culture Buzz. Thank welcome you. to Israel. Thank you very much. Actually, it's a bit funny because we are your guests in Israel. You have given us, all of us, a wonderful present. It started 14 years ago. It's a wonderful festival, the Jerusalem Chamber Music Festival. How did it all start? By chance. By mere chance. <laughs> we, uh, I was just at the concert here and uh, I was approached by a few uh, musicians and journalists uh, here in Israel saying that Jerusalem is actually suffering from the lack of musical events and the culture in the long run and it is a lot of uh, tension and so on and how nice it would be to create something for this city some some international event with a festival or something like this. You know, at the moment I didn't think uh, very much because I thought, you know, why should I do it? And actually they have so many, so many people uh, living in Jerusalem, so many musicians. So, But on the other hand, then the idea was to get somebody from outside to do it in order to bring the people from outside. And I think uh, what we are doing now since 14 years, the 15th festival now, is bringing, let's say, the cream of the musicians from the Europe and America and Asia and everywhere, sort of international musicians to Jerusalem for this public who, what, um, do you want to interrupt me a bit? But, you know, it's fine. Because, you know, we're trying to do the... You know, then later you can come and do Lukashenko here for the YouTube. It's very good. He does a great invitation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we are trying to create uh, something for two weeks, let's say, to take the public of Jerusalem out of Jerusalem a little bit in the world and make a trip to, to other countries. And this is the only way we can do it, is to give the present to this public, you know. And... I can tell, after attending one of the concerts, mm -hmm. that not only that you succeed, the audience is very appreciative. Yeah, this is a wonderful audience. And, wonderful. I, know, and I know that people are asking, uh, who attracts all these wonderful musicians to this festival? Is it Jerusalem or Elena? And I also know the answer. <laughs> It is no, there is not one answer. This is, you know how it is, it's like a snowball. You know, once the few people came here in the beginning, and there were people of a great caliber, let's say, you know, wonderful artists, they came maybe for me, and also for Jerusalem. Meanwhile, the others are coming year after year because these great artists are here, and they know that by coming here they are going to participate in a wonderful musical event outside of the saying that of course it is a great city and uh, it's, in, it's public that needs music, public that is very appreciative, uh, that is hungry and thirsty for the great events. And this feeling of um, playing or performing for the public which is in need of this, it's very special that we don't have very often. And so this is, that gives us an enormous sense of uh, satisfaction. That's why a lot of people come here. So it's certainly not for me only, neither for Jerusalem. It's a combination of all this. Yeah. And every course, year, you know, everybody will say, we don't pay. You see, the festival, is very <laughs> the festival doesn't pay. Um, nobody comes for money in any case. For any money. There is no fee. Incredible. People, well, yeah, that's just, this is another thing. It's a little kind of a communism here. Everybody is equal. Everybody is not paid. That's why I say, you know, you will be paid in Homos. Elena and we definitely will come out of here with two kilos more. <laughs> 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 and an appetite for good hummus. Uh, there is no secret, you know uh, lots about communism. You were born and raised there. Yeah, but I left there. I left there and you left. Very, very early. Yes. <laughs> and also, I think it became uh, some kind of a tradition during the years that every year you change the motto. Oh, yes. Last oh, year, yeah. if I'm not wrong, it had to do with uh, Jewish musicians who were killed to, during exactly, the Holocaust. With, 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 we had a sort of uh, the, the so-called uh, Theresienstadt uh, composers, which is it was not only Theresienstadt composers, but those composers which perished, you know, during the Nazi time. 
and it was a very interesting thing. We found uh, some really fantastic masterpieces and we uh, sort of learned about this generation of composers which was uh, p which perished during this time and which we knew only like names let's say we knew that there was a composer so we knew but, that there was but a not the music. Pleiad, little bit but by doing it in the festival over two weeks in every concert suddenly we sort of we learned so much about them and learned to love them and uh, appreciate this music and also found a, a very sad fact that the all of them came from the same places, you know, it is, these were Prague, basically they were Czech, Austrian Czech Empire, and they came, and by their disappearing, the world sort of lost the whole branch of the music, of a new music of the time, and we don't have it anymore, so this is, with the disappearance of this generation, it was cut, and it could have been developed in the other way. A tragedy. Yes, a tragedy. And this year, the motto, the no. emphasis is on Russian music. Russian music, you know. Oh, well, we are not asking know, why. No. No you need. Should, but you know, on the contrary, on the contrary, you see, for 14 years I've never done anything like this. Uh -huh. And I thought, you know, maybe, maybe it's time to sort of to make a retrospective like we did, for example, with this composer Terezinshev, uh, finally to do something which one would think is obvious and which is not obvious at all because uh, there is a lot of pieces in Russian music that people don't know, they don't know about the existence of some composers, and some of the famous composers have written so much music that not everything is known. I think in this festival probably maybe 30% of known music, and the rest is a real interesting wow. new stuff. Truly you know? educational. Truly educational, but it's always here. It's wow. always here, because the public, I must say, I can't stop singing, you know, real, you know, songs <laughs> to this public because this is wonderfully curious audience and you know I don't say that they're very young some of them are very aged people but they have a capacity of curiosity which is amazing and very often after the new piece where we play a lot of new music here they come and they say you know well you know this is wonderful that you are putting these pieces in the program we would like to learn it's very important for us continue doing this wow Best compliment I can have. Amazing. Yeah. Elena, you are an accomplished pianist. And here comes the inevitable question. <laughs> For you as a pianist, if you, if you had to choose, mm -hmm. luckily you don't have to, but if you had to choose, if somebody would force you to the corner yes. and say, Elena, you must choose, what would it be? Recital? A concerto with a good orchestra? Or chamber music? This is precisely the question that I'm trying to avoid. Avoid. I no, apologize. Not only I'm trying I to apologize. avoid. No, no, it's okay. You're, you're right. I'm not I'm trying to avoid. On the contrary, I'm trying to fight against this tendency. Because, let's say, I like everything. And I like also accompanying singers and all sorts of I think to be an accomplished musician, one needs to do all of it. One needs to do all of it. Because, you know, if you play the concerto, you, let's say, you stretch yourself in a large sense of it, you know, you have to play for a big s stage, you have to play with a big sound, you know, and uh, shape. If you play a recital, it's your memory and, uh, and your capacity of concentration in the long run by yourself and being able to bring the public to you, you know, let's say. Because sometimes you play in a bigger hall, you see, a magnet. you play, yeah, magnet. You have to, to be, be a, a magnet. magnet. Yeah, exactly. So this is also it is it's not so easy to keep this concentration and, and uh, said intensity over the long run. Chamber music is a fantastic thing because you dialogue with the others and you also be able to, let's say, to talk and to listen. This is chamber music, you know to be able to sort of to integrate other people and to be integrated in the ensemble, which is in itself also very important for what you play then with orchestra and alone, also repertoires, and very important also to do, uh, I think, accompanying of great singers, because this is one learns a lot about the breathing, about the words, and about the sense, you know, of a certain music. If one does Schubert and, and one doesn't know, for example, leader of Schubert, one never played it, I think one misses a huge dimension of his music, and not only about him. Well, so I answered your question, Absolutely. basically. Yeah. Absolutely. You have to do everything. I, I, one has to try to do everything. Yeah. And, and, you, and you have no preferences whatsoever. You know, it is, 
I would say, you know, as a human being, I prefer chamber music because one travels with friends and and uh, colleagues. It's always it's, very it's nice. It's a social thing. It's a social thing. To travel alone to do recitals is a sometimes a very lonely business. But if you have a good recital and if you have a sense that you uh, achieved something, it is a great satisfaction of another kind. So is it also? In with orchestra is also it is very exhilarating. So one, if it is possible to do it all. I'm a bit afraid now to ask uh, about favorite composers, favorite oh, pianists. Oh, you see, you see, this is a, this is also. Am it I right? Am I right? Being afraid? You don't have to be afraid. I will not eat you up. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. Uh, but uh, favorite composer varies. Favorite composer varies, but there are of course some. You know, my uh, people, uh, let's say composers, which you know sort of accompany my whole life, and I always come back. For example, like Robert Schumann. This is I simply can't live without playing it uh, in a in a regular. Sort of um, intervals, some Schumann. Okay, yeah. interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Pianists, Schumann. you appreciate? Pianists, there are a lot of wonderful pianists around. I like a lot of dead pianists and live pianists, you know. And um, but you see, being a pianist myself, I am less interested in playing uh, in listening to the pianists than to listening to other things, you know, because I learn more from this. I understand. Yeah. Elena, how important is it for you? to uh, embrace or to include uh, in the festival works by Israeli composers? I think it's important. It shouldn't become a goal in itself. You know, when we started the festival, I was criticized for not putting Israeli music in every concert, and they were sort of attacking me, even about it. And I remembering suddenly Soviet Union in the worst times when the one had to always had the Soviet composer in the program. And I said, well, we are not doing this for that. But meanwhile, I must say, there is a uh, wonderful new generation of Israeli composers, and also the very good uh, performance of the contemporary music, like this Meitar Ensemble, which you uh, yes. did. I, I feel it is a, it's a huge difference now. In the last 15 years, really, it, it became in another uh, kind of quality. So there is a good Israeli composers, and I think we absolutely we do every year at least one piece of Israeli composers, sometimes new piece, sometimes yeah. relatively new piece. What can we wish uh, the festival? What can we wish Elena? <laughs> you wish the festival, I think, that first of all it continues, that there is, um, that we can peacefully continue doing this festival in this troubled zone of the world, in this city, and that there is peace in this city and uh, at least relative, and that um, the public continues to come, that we, we, that we can be able to always surprise people with something new, something interesting and beautiful, and to give this pleasure, because this is our pleasure, is to give the pleasure to, to the people here. And then I would like to thank you for taking thank the time. Much. Wish you thank all you. the best. Thank you. And uh, you shalom. Shalom. <laughs>